Time's first breath is a thought, a notion, a bit of whimsy in a shapeless void. The road to the creation of a flying pig began with a tiny ball of energy with all the stars inside. At the urging of the force of gravity, a large chunk of space matter acting like a solar vacuum cleaner pulled in smaller chunks of debris left over from the creation of the sun. Life began in a tidal pool. Complex structures of atoms were made and unmade trillions of times until one of them started to make copies of itself. A menagerie of hideous creations chased and ate each other like Wall Street hedge fund managers. Your early ancestors were quick flyers in this ancient ocean. Armed only with guile and trickery, they kept a low profile and survived. It was only a matter of time when our early relatives crawled out of the crowded seas and learned to live in an ocean of air. Flight, easy underwater, was a challenge to these above-ground creatures. A minor player in the dinosaur times was the mammal. They had a taste for reptile eggs and played a part on the thunder lizard's extinction. Dinosaurs grew to despise the pesky flying mammal, which they likened to hairy black and white mosquitoes. The ice ages hardened the species, sus essex aviatrix. They stood tusk to tusk with their saber-toothed contemporaries. Today, I am your host, here to tell you a story of art that was made and lost and found again. In the latter part of the 20th century, a North American artist flew to the Soviet Union with 17 of his paintings for a series of museum exhibits. The works of art were trapped in Siberia for 24 years. In 2013, a rescue team entered Siberia through Beijing, China to attempt to locate these lost artworks and bring them home. They had 11 days to accomplish this rescue. This is the tale of those 11 days. Our story begins in 1989. Ronald Reagan was president of the United States. Gorbachev's days were numbered, and Margaret Thatcher ruled the British Isles. That year, a young artist in Stanwood, Washington, was painting pictures of Northwest history. So when I moved to the Pacific Northwest from Boston, after a huge fire sort of took all my work out, I ended up in the Northwest about 1982 in a, with a pickup truck and my dog and the clothes on my back. And within a few years, I started a gallery out here in the town of Stanwood, Washington, right on the coast. I found that when I was doing paintings out here, I was fascinated by the history of the region, and people would come by and tell me stories. And they told me great old stories of the floods and the fires and the old hotels. So I became sort of a, a Stanwood historian and as a painter. In the year 1989, there was a big controversy in town because uh, SeaTac Airport down in Seattle was looking for a third runway. They were going to put maybe a runway in Bremerton and have a boat that came across to SeaTac or go out to Moses Lake and have a bullet train. But most people like the idea of having Stanwood, Washington, about 50 miles north of the airport, right on the highway. It had about 150 flat acres, a couple of farms in it. They said this would be a great airport. About half the town thought it was a good idea to have a runway from SeaTac up here, easy to get to a flight. And the other half the town said, what? Airplanes crashing into us? Airplanes flying over our heads? We don't want to have an airplane 
landing strip right next to our beautiful little town. So I decided to do a series of paintings. And the idea came like this. There was this little greasy spoon named Helen's Kitchen. I would go there for breakfast and I was on one of my many diets and I'd go to Helen and I'd say, Helen, I want poached eggs on dry toast. And she'd say, no problem. And she'd put some butter in it, drop the egg in it and boil it over these five little circle cups. And I'd get this and I'd say, Helen, I don't want the butter. I just want you to take the egg, put it in the water, turn the heat down, it doesn't get all messy. No, I don't do it that way. I said, Helen, I can't eat butter. It's not on my diet. Helen says, you eat it here this way or you go somewhere else. When I decided to do some paintings of the proposed airport in Stanwood and the effect it would have in the community, my target was Helen, because Helen pissed me off. The concept was that everything that Stanwood held dear was going to be in jeopardy. We had a beautiful bakery, a little Scandinavian bakery. The bakery turned into an erotic bakery. There's a painting of me in there where I'm in my hot tub out on Camino. It's a perfect day. I've got a stickly chair in the yard, three women beside me in the tub. Here comes the 747. I have another painting where uh, our beloved Pilchuck School up above Stanwood is in the path of a 747. And here's Dale Chihuly on the porch blowing an aircraft runway bowl. I have another painting where you're looking inside and is Helen gliding across with her coffee. A bunch of plumbers leaned over uh, and you can know they're plumbers. Trust me, in the window is a 747. So this whole series was called The Last Time They Saw Helen's Kitchen. And I decided to sort of turn Stanwood into an apocalyptic vision of what happens when a beautiful little town meets a public airport. This is the invitation I made for the last time I saw Helen's Kitchen. I expected anyone to get an invitation from me to take it out of the mailbox, fold it, bend it, manipulate it, and my invitations turn into statues or something real that you could put on your desk or fly or play with or something. And that way people remembered my event. There is your Jack Gunter flying airplane invitation. Perfect. Once again, it works every time. When people came to the show, I had recorded loud sounds from a aircraft carrier landing. And when you walked into my gallery, the sound was... <laughs> And of course, this is an anti-airport show. So people were walking around in my gallery saying, this is a great show, but I can't hear anything you're saying. And I would say, that's the point of the show. So basically, I had a lot of fun messing with Helen's kitchen. We had a big opening in Stanwood. She went to the opening with her attorney and she found eight times that I crashed into her restaurant, but I never heard from them, so apparently it's okay. Also that year, a Soviet economic partnership group touring the United States happened upon Gunter's Gallery in the sleepy Puget Sound town. The leader of the entourage was a physicist turned ambassador named Valerian Ivanchenko. At that time, it was first uh, visit of a group of Soviet kids to the United States. It was uh, a lot of work because Soviet Union was a country that did not allow uh, citizens to go especially to the uh, this uh, ugly country of the American devils uh, that is uh, devils I know they yes are. Uh, very uh, angry uh, about Americans because they were uh, organized war against this country and were trying to make people be enemies but uh, people were thinking in another way and I was a member of the group Soviet Mid Middle America that in 89 went to the United States. We were traveling uh, along the Washington State, Seattle, other places, and also we attended Stanwood. And there we saw your gallery, and there we meet. When you and your entourage came to my gallery, there was a very attractive dark-haired woman, and I was under the belief that you could not go to the United States as a in the USSR as a citizen unless you had one member of the, the secret police or the KGB to keep an eye on you. And I wanted to kiss her. I wanted to kiss a spy. Was well, she really uh, a spy? No. No. She worked uh, for the Foundation for Social Innovations and she was uh, uh, ordinary, nice Come looking. On. Tell me the truth. She was a spy. Uh, yes. It, uh, there was a, <laughs> a journalist, Helen, that was working for Komsomolskaya Pravda. She was communist and uh, she could be uh, writing for the KGB, but I don't think so. The visitors saw the angst of contemporary Russian artists and the playfulness of a child in Gunter's work. They invited him to travel to the Soviet Union for a series of museum exhibits. 
my buddy Dan Haggerty and I had to have a quick fundraiser. So in one week we had a crash fundraiser. We raised five thousand dollars. Within a week we had money for our tickets, and we just go for it. I was Jack's companion on the trip, the original trip to the Soviet Union. We never called it Russia because it wasn't Russia then. We met back in Stanwood, Washington, Tomato Island. Jack uh, was probably most responsible for me having an art show there and for having gone to Russia. We came to Moscow on Pan Am, the old airline, and Pan Am was actually going out of business the next week. But it was a once a glorious Pride of America type airline. And now we came over on a 747, and that plane has got huge wide doors. The reason we chose that plane was because of the size of Jack's plane. When you talk about these exchanges, one of my favorite moments, the first time I got to Moscow with my friend Dan, who get to the airport and we couldn't get in. And I see you way over there in the crowd and you leaped the fence and you ran up to the customs against all the rules and you started yelling at them in Russia and they yelled back and, and you said, Dan, you stay here, Jack, come with me. We went up to the third floor to a woman with a typewriter and she took three carbons and this is... 1989, and she put carbons in typewriter, cranked it together, said, carbons, this is, this is an ancient tool. And you asked me, are you a member of a political organization? I am not and never have been a supporter of any organization known to me to be or suspected by me of being controlled or dominated by communists. And I said, no. And from the side of your mouth, I heard, too bad. So I said, instantly invented... I'm a member of the Stanwood Siberian Cultural Exchange. And I remember you said that to her, and she says, how to show? And then we were in. Valerian and Jack and I, we were in Moscow. He took us to uh, McDonald's. This is their first McDonald's in all of Russia. There were hundreds of people there. They had a line outside to go in. It was wrapping down the block outside of McDonald's. I saw the pictures of meals and stuff you could get. And there were families staring at it, but they weren't going into McDonald's because they didn't have the money yet, you know. But they actually came and took their kids to look at hamburgers. We went in there to eat and it was just wonderful. I mean, because we hadn't had any American food for a while. It was obvious to me that the, the, the Soviet Union was over, that they didn't incorporate what other people desires were. You know, what we want McDonald's, you know. We want it, we want 12 cent hamburgers like they do in the United States. When it was time for Haggerty and Gunter to leave Moscow for their first art exhibit, the destination was Akadem Gorodok a birch-tree forested town dotted with research institutes. Gunter was only the second American allowed in the secret town since it opened its gates to foreigners. After a month in Siberia, Gunter and Haggerty flew back to the United States. The artwork stayed behind and was scheduled for two additional museum shows in the Soviet Union over the course of a year. Gunter was told to return to Siberia after the exhibits ended to take his art back to the United States. A year later, the world had changed considerably. The Berlin Wall was dismantled. A playwright was now president of Czechoslovakia. Boris Yeltsin was running the disintegrating band of states known as the Soviet Union. And the Russian experiment with communism had fallen apart in front of the whole world. Jack traveled back to what was now called Russia to bring his artworks back. He invited the sculptor and whimsical innovator Lynn Denino to join him to share her unique point of view. I'm Lynn Denino and I'm a working artist. I've supported myself for almost 40 years and mostly I make sculpture and it's in the category of humorous or witty. We arrived in the airport in Russia, in Moscow, and it was uh, uh, so dimly lit that you couldn't even read uh, posters. Uh, it was so dark in there. And uh, it was my understanding that Valerian would pick us up at the airport and we probably waited six hours in that dark, mysterious place with no one showing up. 
It was terrifying. Jack and I had a pretty hard time on the trip and it wasn't completely Jack's fault. Uh, we were under an enormous amount of stress. Of course, we were there to try to get the paintings back, his show. And then there was the pressure of having such a hard time finding something to eat. And we were both pretty willing to eat just about anything, but at that time in Russia, uh, the shelves were very bare. It's possible that the people were so generous and so nice because they'd all had so much vodka to drink from breakfast until two in the morning. And I like to drink, but I cannot drink a lot. I just would, it would be too painful. So I had to get really good at um, pretending to take a sip because the minute they saw that there was some uh, extra space in your glass, they would pour more vodka in it. So I would just pretend to take a sip and then put it back down. Jack, on the other hand, usually sitting right next to me, appeared to be just wolfing the vodka down because he's a much better guest than I am. By this time, Jack and I pretty much weren't talking to each other at all. It was a really hard place to be, and even though they told us they would uh, come and get us, we would wait for a phone call, we would wait for them to show up. The two of us could never leave at the same time. If one person left, they felt like they couldn't go away far. It was really pretty scary. So, who is this Jack character? At that time, I was like, I could kill him. Look what he got me into. This is not fun. It was challenging, and I'm... Uh, thrilled to have those memories, even though they were challenging. I think uh, they make great stories. If somebody wants to hear what Russia was like, I can certainly tell them. We came back. I think we probably didn't talk to each other for a few years. We were both worn out from that trip, but I always admired that Jack uh, was so uh, diligently going after his work, after all. It's his damn work. So Lynn and I travel around for another month in Russia and at the end, we're looking for my customs agent. I keep saying, where are my paintings? I want to see my paintings. I'm, I'm excited about getting them home. Valerian says, there's a problem. The customs agent that was here last year is missing. We can't find him. I've spent a whole month trying to locate him. I've been trying to find your paperwork. The paperwork is lost. He is gone. There is no records of your art. And so unfortunately, you have to go home without him. And... What can I say? The plane was leaving. I had no choice. I said, I can't take them home. He said, no. Perhaps someday you can come and get them. I said, just come back and get them? I'd, I'll never be able to get back here. You know what it costs to get here, this trip? He said, I cannot help you. Your paintings must stay. So that was 1990, and I've been waiting 24 years for the chance to go back and get my paintings. Crushed, bewildered, and heartbroken, Gunter flew back to the U.S. empty-handed. Communications with Siberia in the 1990s was nearly impossible. International phone service was spotty at best. The internet was in its infancy, and letters were returned unopened. As Gunter grieved about the artworks lost, he continued to create. Always the artist, he leaped into a series of huge paintings that were chronicles of the Russian journeys. He opened a popular art gallery on Kameno Island with the artist Karla Matsky and named it History of the World Part 4 Fine Arts. He continued to buy and sell antiques to make ends meet. He completed over 1,000 paintings. His creations grew bigger and more complex. In 1999, he created an entire civilization. The installation called Secrets of the Mount Vernon Culture combined 30 large ceramic urns reassembled from shards. A multimedia exhibition that toured museums claimed the artifacts were 30,000 years old. He recruited Russell Johnson, the professor from Gilligan's Island, to lie on camera about the ersatz discovery in a full-length documentary that also starred legendary avant-garde filmmaker Bruce Bailey in multiple roles. With a background as a chemist, he tackled the neither world of phosphorescence and 3D imagery to make paintings that turned into holograms in a dark room. 
He got political when he painted Newt Gingrich naked and Hillary Clinton defending a child from hungry, trickle-down conservatives. Along the way, he published five novels, as well as a full-color pictorial history of the Pacific Northwest, including the future, explained by our species, Sus Essex Aviatrix, the flying pig. 24 years passed, and then a message, contact. The paintings are here, and they are safe, Valerian told Gunter on Facebook. On the questions of paperwork, he was uh, vague. A rescue team was assembled. Uh, I got an email from Jack, and, and it just out of the blue. I hadn't seen him for a while, and uh, he said, hey, I'm going to Siberia to uh, get some paintings. Uh, you want to make a film with Jesse? I think, sure, why not? Well, uh, I was back home visiting my family, and I ran into Jack, and he mentioned the reconnection with Valerian Ivanchenko on Facebook and the story of his lost paintings in Siberia and that he potentially wanted to go back to retrieve the paintings and maybe even film that. Um, the idea struck me as pretty interesting and so I ended up going and doing some research um, and basically came across a site called RussianBrides.com and uh, that uh, pretty much sealed the deal for me. Sir, how are we doing? Just peachy. Ready to do this? Ready to change the world, Jack? Uh, let's go. That's gonna, we're gonna break the world in half, motherfucker. Stop! I'm dying to get into the air so I can take my damn book out and uh, start editing. I got nine sweet hours ahead of me. Nothing to do. No one can find me, just get me and my book. On September 24, 2013, Jack Gunter, Jesse Culver, and Ken Rowe left on a Chinese airline. Destination, Siberia. First stop, Beijing. Chances for success, unknown. Jack. Hey, buddy. What? What? Where? Where are we? Beijing. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Rise and shine, sweetheart. No. It's 3 a.m. I don't want to go to Russia. I don't want to go. It's 3 a.m., buddy. It's wake up call. Oh. Let's do this. It's 3 a.m., Jack. We're gonna get your paintings. We're gonna get your paintings, man. Come on. Rise and shine. That's the spirit. That's the spirit of the 12th man. All right. Hey, buddy. It's dark out. Oh, yeah. Gotta catch that 4 a.m. shuttle, you know. All right. Let's go. Back in the USSR. Come on. Did you brush your teeth or anything? No. <laughs> oh, 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 Alright, Jack, so is someone meeting us at the, the airport when we land in Siberia? I sure hope so. So you don't know? You know, it's a Facebook conversation. Valerian knows the date we're coming. It's all I can get. Just the date. No he, time. He'll figure it out. <laughs> uh, is the Nova Sibiris Airport near the city? I really doubt it. Okay. How about a place to stay when we get there? Anything lined up? 1989, he got us places to stay. I'm assuming he's got something lined up. Okay. We got a car to get around in and everything. Um, I don't know information on that. All right. Uh, do you speak a lick of Russian in case uh, we get in a pinch? You know, the only word I remember from 1989 is the word Acherovachalnaya. It, it means you're a charming fox. <laughs> uh, what happens if no one meets us at the airport and we're stuck there for all 11 days? Well, Jesse, we're filmmakers. We got cameras. We got a place to go. We have 11 days to shoot something. Let's see what happens. 11 days in the airport, 
could be interesting. Okay, okay. Despite the lack of planning for the travel arrangements, Jack was greeted in Siberia by a friendly face. This is Alexander. He's uh, the son-in-law of my friend Valerian. Okay. You made it back, Jack. How's it feel? Uh, nice to be home. Yeah? Nice to be back in the USSR. Go to Altai. Nice to meet you here again. <laughs> Good to see you. Me too. Good to see you. Good to see you. Valerian Ivanchenko. Yes, well, shortly. 25 years in the making right here, right? Yes, That's right. 25 years. I have returned. Yes. Are we going to rescue his paintings? Uh, now this goes in process, uh, therefore. All documents are in, in work and uh, we will do this. Nice, all right. Valerian, I brought some extra cash to the, mm. to the customs man. Uh, do do does the money No, money no, no, doesn't it, work? it doesn't work. Uh, you see, if you would have uh, something small, yeah. it will. As far as this is about 100 kilos. Sure. Uh, this must have only legal way. Okay. But also I want to tell you that legal way is much more uh, is b much better than any other. Sure. Because you can pay and then you will be arrested. That's right. That's good. <laughs> and you and then you will not be able to take your uh, works outside. Straddling the Ob River, the world's fifth longest, Novosibirsk is a Russian success story. Dubbed the Chicago of Siberia 100 years ago when the Trans-Siberian Railway linked the sprawling frozen continent, the city of two million is a thriving metropolis in the new Russia of 2013. Once a whistle stop on a 6,000 mile railway, the Novosibirsk of today is attracting visitors from all over the world. But you know, the show I brought here was social protest. Yes. And I never yes. knew that it was social protest until a Russian said to me, this Because artist, it was your ordinary protest. feelings about this. Yeah, and I, he said, this is protest. <laughs> and I this said, appeared to be social protest. I said, no, I'm having fun with Stanwood. And I said, no, you're right. I don't want the airport to come. I made paintings that showed the negative results of what would happen. And that's like any artist making a comment on the politics of the times, isn't it? Yes. And I didn't know that I was making social protest. I just thought I was being a brat. <laughs> One of the most important moments of my life was here in this science center, the scientist's house, when a Russian woman came to me and she looked at all the butt cracks and she said, it's the same in our country. <laughs> and I said, I have made 
a reach across the ocean to another country that says, our pants fall down just like yours. We're all the same. We're all humans. One of the jewels of Siberia is the Novosibirsk State Art Museum. It houses over 10,000 objects, from early icons to the spiritual paintings of Nicholas Rorich. Among them, 17 paintings in egg tempera, left there by an American artist a quarter century before. This stuff is amazing. These things have maybe never been seen anywhere but from these cameras. Holy smokes. Now, do you notice that these icons were painted uh, 500 years ago on a piece of wood? And over 500 years, the wood is bent because of the nature of the log as it dried. Look at that beautiful gold leaf. Everything here is for sale. Well, 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 indeed. <laughs> These things are for sale. Take that, American Pickers. I'm here and you're not. I love that, too. I would buy that today. 1935 social realism. I think all of our funding money is going to go to buying paintings. This is the best pick of my life. There's no question about it. So you can see here famous card. This is uh, uh, from United States. Uh, this is Tudor Baker. Yes, that's rare. Uh, but uh, it is Volga in Russia. It was stolen from Tudor Baker and was uh, produced in Soviet Union. I have a question, Valerian. Yes. Tell me about this painting. Is this the uh, in the Kremlin, in the Politburo? Uh, no, it is not in Kremlin. It is somewhere in Soviet time. This what a historical document. Yes, historical document. Do you know any of these guys? No, I don't know. Maybe somebody knows. I was not acquainted with that. I think I see Edward Snowden here somewhere. <laughs> right? He's right that, that's him right there. Snowden. At the time, yeah. was Come, take it. <laughs> Jesse, I, look, get tight. It's... I think that's him right there, actually. Jack Gunter, Daniel Haggerty, Samara Museum. These were the paintings that were at the Samara Museum when, after the fall of communism, a bunch of guys came from New York City and they said, we are going to find the original old Russian art that's been hidden by the regime for 25 to 1,000 years. And they came to the museum and they walked in. And guess who was in the museum when they got there? Me. This is the exhibition poster. This is amazing. What a keeper. What a, this, I mean, this is going to my son. And here Jack can see part of his works. Not all, but... Uh, Major. 25 years. 25 years. They uh, live separately from the author. Whoa. How it is quality? Good. It looks good. It's fine. It's uh, as bright as it was painted the first day. Yes. There is a. Uh, the plumbers at Helen's Kitchen. I see a little bit of damage here. I can fix this. These are these are easy repairs. This happens just in, in any, any transit because the egg tempera is, oh, see now it's solid. 
Yes, it's solid, but uh, yes, yeah. I said you that some oh, fade. Oh, yes, yeah. it's uh, this, uh, that's, uh, that's easy for me to fix. I understand. This is a big moment for me, believe me. I understand. 25 years of my dream is right here at this minute. But there's more large ones somewhere. There's a couple more big ones. Four more. Four more big ones. And, and many small ones. I mean, we have to find them all. Yes, we will find them later. Okay. Yeah. Any Macintosh? As the vodka kicked in, Gunter told the curators about a Pacific Northwest miracle called the Seattle Seahawks. The first Siberian 12th man squad was born. Go Hacks! Go Hacks! Go Hacks! Go Hacks! Go Hacks! Go Hacks! Valerian knows a fellow who bragged about having a Gunter print. After male bonding in the heat of a sauna, <laughs> Gunter finds his first clue to the location of the last uh, work. Uh, recently, his friend was saying that uh, uh, his friend was saying that every man must have uh, a place uh, like a bear is sleeping in. The yeah, same thing. What? You get what? it. I'm Russian Americans. We have our man caves. <laughs> it's important. Russian Americans have their own caves. We're all the same. That's right. Very similar. It's a small world. And it has to have a beer sign, a sign for beer. It has to have trophies and beautiful women and women. <laughs> and perhaps a pool table and vodka. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Gunter, where? On his wall. Holy cow. Wow. Okay. One minute. All the masterpieces. Yeah, ho, ho, ho. Um, yeah. That's 1990. Uh, your picture. Yes. Yes. Uh, you're expressing what you have Autograph! Yes. September 26, 2013. Okay. I had no idea that my paintings and my prints are in Siberia on people's walls. <laughs> and this for me is a thrill. I want to find the rest of my paintings in Siberia. <laughs> the bridge builder tells Jack that he once caught a glimpse of a Jack Gunter original somewhere east of Novosibirsk in the remote Altai Mountains where the roads end and wilderness begins. Maybe we'll find more. The next morning, Valerian drove the team into the city to meet a man who could help. We just had breakfast. Yep. Let me make that clear. I'd also like to say that my doctor told me uh, last week, get down to one glass of wine a day. The reason we're doing this apparently is we're having a meeting. This guy might have a lead for one of the paintings. He says no problem, but we're, you know, that's an interesting phrase in this country. There is some suggestion that it, it's at the, the top of the highest peak in Siberia. It's up there in a capsule. Australia. Not serious. Спасибо. No more. Yes, no more. Они посыпают. Здравия. 
Dr. Huxma, I apologize, but I, it's it's the country. I must do this. Well, I think two shots of cognac equals two glasses of wine. How to show? To Leslie, Leslie, my love, my love, Leslie. So, girls, come here, please. Иди сюда. Хватит уже на тебя. Я, я, я думал, что ты это не ты. Иди сюда. Здесь вот сидят америкосы. Иди сюда, пожалуйста. Это, это наша лучшая подруга. This is my Leslie. The woman I love. женщина, которую он любит. My Jenna, Leslie. I love Leslie more. Can we toast to that? No, not that one. Another one. Его любимая женщина. A different one. She's home. I want to toast to your your Jenna. Okay. To your Jenna. There you go. Thank you. 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 I think the woman beside us said no means no. Did the woman say no? Yes. Did the woman say don't bother me? I believe this trip was out of our control when we began it. Friends. Friends. Friends for life. Here's the sobriety. Это шофер. Шофер. I'm driver. Driver. To the driver. I'm shooter. To the driver and shooter. Are you driving to the Altai? Yes. I'll take the other car. Oh, okay. You celebrate Dr. Huxma. I'd like to get Dr. Huxma once more. It's not my fault. Uh, we angry about him. Yes, we now will leave this place. Yes, fine. So apparently he's pissed off the help and he's ordered three bottles of liquor at 11 in the morning. And we thought we were getting kicked out. And now another bottle of fine uh, white wine has shown. I'd like to say, Dr. Hooksma, I apologize. And I'd like to say, Leslie, I love you. Yuri, astronaut. Hero. He's a hero. He's my hero. <laughs> Lock your door. Did you door locked? Never. Oh, you locked on it. We are going now to Altai from Novosibirsk. This road is goes from Novosibirsk through Barnaul, uh, Gorno Altaisk to Mongolia. It has name M52. It is about 1,000 kilometers, so this is about uh, 12 hours. Altai mountain, only part of mountains uh, are in Russia. The rest are placed in uh, China and Mongolia. Altai are very long mountains, going almost from Himalay to the place we are going to. Altai is having uh, many miracles inside. When we will be there, People, uh, Altai people will be telling us about this. I am not very knowledgeable about this. Therefore, uh, I will leave this uh, explanation for Altai. You know, I'm still looking for paintings. And if Altai is a place of miracles, I think I need another miracle. Perhaps we'll find one. A miracle. Are they flying pigs? If they will fly, then we will picture of them. I think I see one up in the air. So Val, you, you grew up in Novosibirsk, right? 
No, I grew up in Kharkov, Ukraine. Then uh, my parents moved to Novosibirsk. I was schoolboy. You were schoolboy when you moved here? Yes. And uh, since that time I live in Siberia. I started with many uh, sport events. Uh, it was uh, gymnastics, uh, track and field, uh, then modern pentathlon. I am a champion of Novosibirsk region in track and field. Uh, for fun? Like what, as a kid? I, I am living for fun. <laughs> At 11 p.m., the exhausted travelers reached the first camp, deep in the Altai Mountains, near the disputed Mongolian frontier. Place your luggage and let's go to the kitchen for meal. Oh yes, sure. I think we're right next to Mongolia. And this is the place of miracles. So uh we're gonna see what we can find. See if we find a miracle in here somewhere. So I think we'll... uh, we're about to go join uh, the locals for some uh, some dinner. Sounds like. Uh, and perhaps a cocktail. Uh, that'd be nice. I wonder if they have vodka here. It is my advice to try smell of this bread. This is real Russian bread. Valerie, how did you discover this place? Can I eat or should I speak? Both. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is not difficult to discover uh, any place because here in Altai almost all places are having special attraction. Oh, by the way, did I say eat your heart out, Rick Steves? <laughs> I don't know if you said it on camera yet. Okay. Well, hey Rick. After the unexpected feast, the team was awakened at midnight by visitors bearing gifts. You see what knife is? Oh yeah, wow. It is Orient knife. This is Damascus knife. It's beautiful. We're going to cut it like this. Let's cut You told me that that river had good fishing. And our, our new friends from Novosibirsk? No, they are from Beast. Yeah. This fish is so clean, it's possible to eat it uh, fresh. Mm, Without fresh. cooking, yes. Uh, only salt and maybe uh, there is a special yeah, mixture cool, no? of uh, vinegar, tomato paste and something like that. Mixture of this uh, uh, spicy pepper. But salt first of all, a little bit salted. Uh, and then we can eat it. How is it? Do you want Yeah? You need to try some. Можно еще перца. Такими глазами. There's a story about fisherman. He was telling that he got this size fish, this size, then this size, and uh, finally uh, his hands were uh, fixed this way. Uh, and he said, Oh, yesterday I caught fish with this size eye. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So this is midnight in the Altai Mountains. We've driven eight hours. These wonderful friends have come to visit us with beer and fish and stories. Mm -hmm. What could be better? Nothing.
drove east into the wilderness until the roads ended. Valerian had arranged for a boat to penetrate deeper into the endless ancient taiga forest. So we're, we're going on a boat now? Yes. Okay, uh, because we do they think that some Jack Gunter paintings might be across the lake or? Maybe we will see. Okay. If we will be lucky, we will find them something. Uh -huh. What's the name of this lake? This is Teletska Lake, uh, one of the beautiful places of Altai Mountains. Large lake, about 70, 70 kilometers. About 70 kilometers I don't long, know. <laughs> 300 meters deep, and uh, wonderful places around. And we will see all this now. Not good weather today, but weather, we cannot change weather. Apparently, we're going to a roadless land now, reachable only by sea. Lake. Well, it's not really a sea, it's a lake. That's fine. The boat took a small detour to inspect a meteor crater, a local attraction. Uh, yes, Snowden can run away here and nobody will find him, because nobody will come here. <laughs> here is uh, no communication, no connection, nothing. At a primitive dock in a notch in the Altai Mountains, Valerian orders the team to disembark. Here, he said, we will meet a woman who can help us. You don't know where she is either. She will come back, don't worry. These are mysterious people. They live, they come and go from the woods, like a ghost. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, she will be speaking in Altai language, language of the ethnic people living here. Good evening, dear guests. We are glad to welcome you to the great city of Altai. Please leave here, beyond this fence, all your troubles, problems. Please uh, try to be a piece of the nature. Then you will be able to understand and uh, accept all features, uh, all cultural events that uh, are uh, deep in these people, in Altai people okay. and Altai mountains. So I leave my troubles by the door? Yes. Yes, trouble. And then we come in to paradise. Yes, yes. It is necessary to become a kids of nature. So you are living with nature and you are having no problems like money, debts, false love or some, something like that. False love is definitely a danger I've had in the past. In the past? In the past. I had a dream last night where every person that I owe money to, that I have promised a favor and never got to, that I've offered to help and didn't get back to. Last night they all came to me. It was a frightening nightmare. It was hours. Every time I went to another group of people, I had to flee from them and I went to another safe place. And at the end of this dream, I heard a voice that said, this afternoon will be your future. Visa, MasterCard, Wells Fargo Bank, the PUD, the dreaded PUD, bastards, my landlord, my ex-girlfriends, people I've taken advantage of in antique deals. Is there a lot of those? Uh, no, I'm an honest guy, that's why I'm poor. But once in a while. Uh, speaking of Gravit, there's also women who looked not so good in the bar, but later on looked very good. I'm running from them too. We call those a, uh, a two of 10 and a 10 of two. <laughs> <laughs> She prayed for us to Altai 
that Altai will cover us with uh, his uh, glory and uh, uh, it is custom to place ribs there. This act uh, is uh, giving us closer tie to Altai, that Altai will protect us, our being here, will open Altai's soul to us and will be helping us in everything. We now are climbing on the rock of love, of those who are in love. And this island is island of uh, souls of love. I own some real estate on that island. You but can be here, look here, get pleasure of being here, but uh, no, pro I mean, you cannot better. buy any property. Это ты, заколдованный царственный Алтай. Это ты. А куда вот эту маму, которые бегут в неведомые страны? Я не вижу. Some people can see a girl standing. Uh, that rock reminds a girl standing there. Some see, some know, but uh, uh, it is said that it's similar as, as if a girl is standing there. I see female forms in in many inanimate objects. The little guy lying on his side is carved from uh, northern. Uh, Nova Scotia and it's a magical guy with a face see the face there his hands are praying and I really want to leave this here I want to leave this as a as a gift but I'm not sure if it's the wrong thing so I think I'll have to ask I don't think I dare seriously to 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 make an action here without getting permission so at some point I'm going to ask her if I can leave this in this area This place is having name Ayu, Altayan Ayu. Ayu it is place where people live. This is Aul in Kazakhstan and uh, other countries with this uh, kind of languages, something like village. And these are beautiful fabrics. Perhaps it's just upholstery, but it's beautiful. Regarding to legends, the uh, souls of dead relatives can be placed there. This is made of milk. Can I sing the song? Yes. We all live in a yellow submarine. A yellow submarine, a yellow submarine. We all live in a yellow submarine. Yellow submarine, yellow submarine. <laughs> People that are entering such place are exchanging their inner energy between each other. Спасибо, спасибо вам всем. А вы правда приезжайте к нам еще? Приезжайте к нам еще. You have, you have words to say. Вам нужно сказать слова. Сейчас вам скажут. Go Hawks. Go Fox. Oh, Hawks. That's good. Hawks. Go Hawks. 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 Это ястребы. Go Hawks. Yay! You will now make everywhere American smile. We all smile seeing you with this too. This is your 13th man. <laughs> right here. It's my shaman. Shaman uh, amulet. amulet. Shaman dal mm -hmm. mm -hmm. This has been in my pocket many, many years. Mm -hmm. I carry this with me. 
просто амулет. Амулет такой. There is a little face. See the face. Да, вот лицо, да, вижу лицо. He's on his side, he's sleeping. Спит? Yes, see. Mm -hmm. See right there, he's sleeping. Да, 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 да. This came from uh, Inuit. Inuit natives of America. Mm -hmm. а, Inuit, это инуиты. Это индейцы американские. Mm -hmm. Ну, индейцы, да, они тоже вот Very, very dear. Mm -hmm. Can you put this with the shaman rocks or put this somewhere where he can live here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, I don't own this. I'm just a messenger. Mm -hmm. Да, конечно, конечно, Спасибо. конечно, конечно, я это сейчас, сейчас пойду я и передам, да, вот, да, вот хорошо, да, ну, вот надо же посланники как-то, вот, мир такой тесный, да, чистая стена, я, я здесь пешочком потом пройду, до свидания, до свидания. Джек, any idea where we're at right now? I think we're going to a rustic cabin. Maybe the last hideout. Maybe the most remote place that we can get to in Siberia. Let me see this. Oh, oh my God. You gotta be shitting me. Uh, apparently, we found one of my paintings. Oh my <laughs> I didn't expect it here. What? You know, uh, the secondary market is always a surprise when you see where your paintings end up. <clears throat> I'm not sure if this is an honor or if they say the painting is for shit. You know, it's hard to say. No, I'm sure it's an honor, Jack. Um, uh, wow, I mean, so what's the name of this painting? <sighs> this painting is the last time they saw a flock of flying pigs painted in Stanwood in 1989, and here, in 2013, I find it in Siberia, for Christ's sake, in a shitter. But, I'm proud. That's an honor, Jack. Excuse me, we might just use the room. Yeah, of course. I wonder if they'll let me take it home. I may have to purchase it. Okay, here they asked. Let me ask. Sir. I found this in your shitter, and I wonder if I can buy it. Ya hachu kapitz, this painting. Can I give you money? Can I take this painting and I give you? Он хочет, чтобы вы у него купили этот рисунок. Ну, якобы вы ему даете деньги, а он вам дает картину. Fifty euros. Yeah, есть деньги. Fifty. Take a fifty. That's all I have. And this is mine. You take the money, I take the painting. It's a deal. Perfect. Thank you. It's uh, the most my paintings have sold for in three or four years. I brought this blanket. I brought this to wrap my art. I thought it would be appropriate to wrap it in a in a sacred blanket. Thank God.
Aka Demgorodak, the battle with the customs paperwork begins. She will come back, we'll be in the, uh, on the first floor. So is this director coming down to talk to us? Yes, she is going, but I don't see her. I know that the paperwork is not done. You told me you, the, yes, it and is, we, it's it, in the it hands. Progress, yes. It's in the hands of bureaucrats right now. Or uh, well, uh, I hope we'll do everything because uh, the expertise will be done. Uh, all artworks are in the hands of this expert. Now we have no problems of this. So I'm nervous, though I must say. I'm also nervous. So what? Uh, our ner nerves are not doing anything good or bad for this. I'm not afraid of nothing. <laughs> But so many people in America now are hoping that this comes back now. A law is law. It is uh, under the law of regulation, and we cannot do something different. No jail can hold me. The first order of business was a process called authentication, a process aided by people Valerian called the experts. Well, Jack, uh, the uh, money that we have to pay, 3,400. Mm -hmm. 2,400? Transportation, what is... No, 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 it is uh, for getting, uh, per, uh, for the preparation of the permission. Okay. Good. 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 I have the money. Da, money, money. money. And 400. 3,400? This is prices not for sale, this is prices for customs. Uh, Дело в том, что некоторые государства 259 тысяч получилось. Дело в том, что некоторые государства берут госпошлину с завода. Yes, this is uh, высокое, all, считаете, all, all prices less than 10 grand dollars. Uh, the price to make each painting is fifty dollars. Well, uh, but the material, painting, that's so it, the... fifty dollars. In any way, uh, this is estimation, something okay, like. Okay, so uh, I change these numbers. Uh, you won't change. Well, these numbers are numbers that I expected to uh, sell them at. Not prices that uh, are. These are not prices that you should sell. This цена. is not sale. Oh, so these are small enough. This is uh, only for customs. Sh is it good if it's small? Uh, or is I, it good I if think, it's I think yes, because if uh, somewhere we we'll, uh, should have to go through customs, we should pay a uh, custom fee. They only this is the... not sale prices. Okay, these are, this those are different numbers. My different prices numbers. are much smaller. Yes. All I have is a board. A board? Ten bucks. The paint, fifteen dollars. Jack, nobody is trying to estimate your expenses to draw the picture. Oh. This is uh, something like... Like wholesale? Yeah, yeah. this is not wholesale. This is price that uh, must be... Uh, you never was working with officials. You do not know that customs uh, like to charge money. So they, you want a price that sounds okay, but it's not too high. Yes, it's price. They will say it's price. Yes, we agree with this price. It's not uh, low, and we agree you to, uh, and uh, your fee will be 0.5 percent. Okay. I need more money. Huh. One further step. I'm a little bit nervous. I'd say the chances of me getting my paintings out of Russia is about 30% right now. 
And if it, I do get them out, it's going to be, I have no idea how much, how many thousands it's going to cost for shipping. I once tried to ship a, a picture like this that weighed 15 pounds to France and the price was a thousand dollars. We'll see what happens. I just paid for an expert to verify that these paintings are legitimate and they can leave. And then, on the basis of this work, the office official will issue the final paper. But as I used to say all the time, Russia is the country of miracles and evergreen tomatoes. The end of the line was a joyless fourth floor office of the customs official who had the fate of the entire project in his hands. No, no records now. No. Okay. No. To Gunter, he said, no wisecracks, please, no jokes, and whatever you do, Jack, do not mention Edward Snowden. Ah, oh, failure. The ride home is a quiet one. The permits are not granted. Valerian tells the heartbroken artist, no problem, a phrase Gunter heard 24 years before. You know, it's a little deja vu all over again here. Uh, where one day from getting my paintings home, he says it's all fixed, there's no problem. This is the same day that happened 24 years ago. I went to get the paintings at the DHL and see if they were shipping, and they said, oh, there's a problem. There's a problem with the paperwork. So we're not out of this yet. He has to go to one other thing. He says there's another issue. Valerian has an announcement in the morning. The art museum wants to host a pop-up exhibit of your artwork before it leaves Russia. An art opening is scheduled for the next evening, and the press is invited. I am going to have a show in oh. Russia, another museum show? Yes. No shit. When is this show? I didn't know I had another. Uh, I thought I was going to get the paintings and go home. There is a special uh, place for temporary exhibitions. Are they in like the bathrooms and the No, no, no. And it, the it showers. Regular place really? for real? Yes, yes, yes. Regular place. Wow, I'm looking forward to seeing that. You will see this soon? And I'll get on Russian television maybe? Oh sure. Excellent. We'll try to do all this. What I want to do is get my paintings home. That's the most important thing. I know. And uh, uh, we, not only me, we are working hard to make it happen. This is the uh, artist-only VIP entrance to the museum. This is the stage entrance. 
The rock star has arrived. This thing is, uh, a, as they say in America, it's a big fucking deal. I think. Uh, I've never been to a Russian press conference before. I'm sort of happy to be here. I'm sort of honored to be here. And I'm also amazed that Valerian has pulled off this, uh, this little feat. The questions could get political. I have to be careful to say the right things. I've been instructed to keep all my clothes on. Nicely done. Here's the first thing I saw. We left these paintings here in a rough state, unframed, and I was wondering uh, how are they going to present these in frames, and they did a beautiful job. They did them sans frames, as I say in French, and they're hung a little bit off the wall. I like it. Creates some space. My dear friend. Good to see you. You like this? Hello, Russia. Hello, Siberia. Woo! See, the humans watched a thing on television called Fox News, and they lost their critical thinking skills. And they find the, the mother of God of Kazan, the original, and his friend, the Russian, his name is Ivanchenko. 24 years. Every day I said, someday I will go back and get my paintings. My paintings are fun. They make people smile. So I am what's called, I call myself a feel-good painter. I create happiness. Uh, when you uh, went here for the first time, yes. what were your feelings about Russia? What uh, was similar to the United States? What was different? This is very important. I was in Moscow and I watched children play. I watched women arm in arm with their friend, their dear. And, and lovers, they were kissing. Uh, and I said, our country has missiles aimed at this place. This is crazy. These are wonderful people like us. We are all fine. We don't... We have no interest. We have no anger towards each other. It's just the government and the government. Boom. The people, they are the same everywhere. They have love in their hearts. And they have dreams of the future. And we are all the same. We are all the same people. And after you went back home, did you want to draw something also critical about uh, Russia? Oh, no. <laughs> yes. Oh, no. But no, you draw, you draw my <laughs> painting with this uh, sur surrounding. I did a painting of this man. We love the football team, Seattle Seahawks. And our team is four and zero. Four wins, no losses. Go Seahawks! Can you say it? <laughs> Go Hawks! Go Hawks! Go Hawks! Go Hawks! Go Hawks! Go Hawks! Go Hawks. Go Hawks! Go Hawks! Go Hawks! <laughs> we will bring this back to America and they will hear you cheer. Can they nail it? So far so good, buddy. Hey, I'll tell you, two shots of scotch, a little morphine.
The next morning, the story of the American trying to get his artworks back hit the TV airwaves on Russia Channel One, their version of the Today Show, right after a moving piece about the wonders of making cheese. Картина Джека Гюнтера очень броский и остро социальный. Вот эта серия, например, это протест против строительства аэропорта рядом с маленьким американским городком. И вывести картину оказалось невозможно. Таможня не пропустила. Теперь 19 полотен наконец-то отправятся на родину. Новосибирским эстетам стоит поторопиться. Экспресс-выставка продлится до 3 октября. Екатерина Гагарина, Иван Осинцев, Вести, Новосибирск. И на этом. The real battle lay ahead. The Russian bureaucracy. Time was running out. Jack met with representatives of an international shipper to bypass the questions at airport customs offices in both Novosibirsk and Beijing, China. They dealt with exports out of Russia and promised to make the return foolproof if Jack came up with a document from the customs agent on the fourth floor and came up with a pile of money for the packaging, fees, and a 10,000-mile delivery. And very important this. Very <laughs> fragile. When we take these from here, these guys will um, pack them into the truck just for transport, not for packing and shipping. Protecting the faces of each. And then we go across the Oak River to the large DHL office where I guess I'm going to supervise how they're packed and then they'll weigh them and then I get the moment of reckoning where they say, oh, these are too heavy. These are more than we thought. Our price tag of 2,500 has been changed. If they say it's over 4,500, I don't have the money. There's nothing in the account after that. Round two with the experts. Was it more money than expected for the No, rest? no, no. We didn't pay at all money on the first time. We didn't have enough at that time. Therefore, we uh, took care of the, the rest. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Is this a good time for me to purchase the painting? Сейчас хорошее время купить у вас картину. Да, пожалуйста. Any time you want. Мы тогда тоже сделаем на ее экспертизу. Экспертизу сделаем в подарок. And uh, this artwork also should have uh, expertise and uh, this also will be said that this is a gift. And this will be added. Otherwise we will not be allowed to carry that across. One, one thousand? Seven. Seven thousand? Seven. Oh, seven thousand rubles. It's worth it. Two hundred and twenty-five bucks. It's a greasing. Expertise is a gift. This will be for free. For you? Do you have a price for dealers? No, they are dealers themselves. <laughs> That's the way we work too. <laughs> <laughs> Valerian calls the next morning with news. The local morning talk show, the Siberian equivalent of Regis and Kathy Lee, want to have Jack on as a guest. We have to hurry, he tells them. The show goes on live in two hello, hours. Hello, hello. Hello, Jack. hello, hello. Julia. Nice uh, to meet you. Nice to meet you. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. What fun. Um. And we plan to make a film of the rescue of these paintings from Siberia back to the United States. Our Seattle football team is called the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, what давайте вместе. 
Let's go see hot. Let's go see hot. Let's go see hot. Let's go see hot. Now, they went back to the joyless man in the bleak office on the fourth floor of the customs building. This is the last chance to succeed, where they failed 24 years ago. This is the main story. That's it right there, right? Let's go! Goal! <laughs> One more step. Stuff. That was a big success right there. Right. That was uh, the last of the paperwork. Now we see if we have the funds. I may have to stay here with the work and meet you in a few months. I'll stay with you. Okay. Yeah, I bet you will. <laughs> we have paid the money. We've got the certificates. We've got the paperwork in order. We've driven 12,000 miles to get here to accomplish this, and it's all going to hinge on these five minutes. Просто в коробке плоские упаковывают, ну так же точно лицом к лицу, спина к спине с прокладками, и они совершенно хорошо доедут, если их зафиксировать по бокам. Там ступ, ну дальше она не зайдет, там ступеньки и двери, да. Соответственно, это телефон. Мы всегда со мной. I can pay DHL when it gets to America, if that's better for you. I don't know if that's... Uh, you will pay all delivery, yeah, door but, to door. Yeah, but I can pay, pay now here? or no, I... No, no, yeah, no. of course yes. I will. We are discussing how we will pay because uh, we will be loading car there. If car can, is, is having terminal that can accept your car or not, and then we'll have to come here to pay here the cargo delivery. You can also pay more now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe twice as much now and it's not give back to this one. No, but no, no, not to you guys. How <laughs> 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 <No>. much <laughs> it will be, you will pay exact sum. I know. Just trying to help. <laughs> Удалите, удалите все, что вы снимали. Switch off. Oh, все, oh. Что, все, что снимали, покажите мне и удалите. A DHL certificate, receipt, 71,314 Krugerrands, or uh, rubles, it's rubles in this country. I'm in so many countries. No, 71,000 rubles. This one, 5,000 rubles as a, for a gift for my sweetie. For the shipping, that is almost 80,000 rubles that I have just paid to get my paintings back from the Soviet Union, now called Russia. It's going to be back in five days. I won't believe it until I see the package, but I think that I will get three huge packages in four to five days in Stanwood, Washington. I think we have accomplished what we came to do. It took us two weeks. We had to suffer a lot of ways. We had to go search for things. We had to go up into the mountains near Mongolia to find some of our objects. We had to cruise dodgy bars in Siberian towns. And then we had to go through a mountain of paperwork, a mountain of red tape, a mountain of money here, money there. Who needs the grease? What can we do? And then a whole bunch of credit card problems and then the final thing, I hear the thing come out of the credit card. I said, that sounds like a receipt. That does not sound like someone saying, oh, this card is no good. It sounds, let me say that sound again. That is this little boy right there. Yes, indeed. Holy shit. Thank you very much. Valerian's daughter is hosting a farewell dinner. Hello. <coughs> Hello, how are you? Have fun. Are you? <laughs> Hello, nice coming. All right. He found me on Facebook. And he <laughs> said, Oh, what are you doing? And he saw your face. 
Uh, and he says hello. And I went, oh my god, here you are. After 20 years, there you are. That post brought us here. I think we should drink for Facebook. <laughs> I I'm all right with that. Thank you for the wine to Facebook. <laughs> to Facebook. So you can see uh, 80 of my paintings. And that's my gift to you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And I have one for you and your family. <laughs> <laughs> 1985. You know the date, the time. My brother, my younger brother, was dying. 34 years old, dying. Of the AIDS. He was going to die. He knew it. He was sick. He felt bad. And he knew it. he would die. Very sad year. I, cr I can cry right now. One day, I said, Steve, I will paint a pig. I painted this guy. He smiled. First smile in many days. And I said, look, I will paint another picture. And he's leaping in the air. And then I said, hey, Steve. If I move him over here, he's made a flight. And then he lands on this side of the trees. This was the pig's first flight. And he smiled. And he said to me, as a dying man, keep it simple for me. Uh, and I... <laughs> I'm sorry. I learned from him. I learned a lesson. He taught me... How to make people smile. Yeah. He taught me that. That was his gift to me. And this whole book, <coughs> pig, 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 pig. All my pigs come and from uh, that day. So you learn, when you give a gift, you get more back. Yeah. So this is dedicated to my brother. Yes, he gave me a great lesson. Okay, very bright. Oh, yes, very old. To my brother. I already did this. soil. Okay, it looks like we get to open the paintings now. That's pretty exciting. So this is a big moment. Yeah, we're going to bring them right out here maybe and put them in the front. This is the first time these guys have seen the light of uh, American sunshine in uh, 25 years. Ah. Ah. That's the old Fjord room oh. at the Viking restaurant. Wow. She did make good biscuits and gravy. Oh, these are cool. Look, these are the old, uh, the old Russian exhibition tags with the names in Russian. An international man of mystery. Is it going face down? Yeah, look at all. Yeah. Yeah. Seattle, San Francisco. 
History travels through time in loops. A 24-year loop for the last time they saw Helen's kitchen was completed at the Stanwood UPS store. Another loop emerges. That would be a good show here for, for the science house, wouldn't it? Perhaps I should come back and uh, have a show here because what a place. Well, I think I should have another show here so I can come back in 20 years and get it again. What do you think? Maybe not 20, maybe this can be shorter. The Russians love their heroes. The hero of this story is Valerian Ivanchenko. As our world around us tumbles into chaos, it's people like him, heroes like him, that give us hope for the future. Would I go back to Siberia? Sure I would. The Siberian people have huge hearts and a passion for life. I'd like to go back to the Mongolian border, back to the island of lost love. Every human emotion that an artist could want to work with lives on that island. Love, compassion, remorse, forgiveness. They're all on that island waiting for me to capture them in a painting. <laughs>